Hey, Bulldog fans, welcome in for another episode of Tech Talk. Uh, I'm Tommy McClellan, and I am here with uh, Louisiana Tech Hall of Famer, Louisiana Sports Hall of Famer, the College Football Hall of Famer, and Pro Football Hall of Famer, uh, Willie Rowe. Willie, welcome to Tech Talk. Thank you for having me, Tommy. I see you've been uh, quarantined. I like the beard. Yeah, well, yeah, it's growing a little <laughs> bit longer, and, uh, what you know, I don't know how long we're going to be. By the time this thing's over with, I may look like Phil Robinson with the Duck Dynasty. <laughs> uh, yeah, I see you've got a little little bit growing as well. Yeah. Um, but listen, well, we're so glad to have you on this episode. And, and really, this is just an opportunity for, for us to kind of reach out to some of our alums and, and, uh, and our LaTeX legends, kind of see how what how things are going in your life and, and what's going on and just talk, talk tech. Uh, but t- tell us, you know, everybody's life is different right now. And, uh, you know, how are things with you? How are you managing this situation? And, and uh, what's, what's your new norm like? Well, the new norm is, uh, you know, just uh, around the house more, you know, getting used to being here. Uh, they shut the gyms down. As this thing picked up, you know, when everybody saw it coming. And, uh, you know, really they think it's been here, Tommy, since uh, – you know, around the Super Bowl time in Miami. But, uh, you know, you don't know. And uh, and uh, as it progressed, they shut the gym down. So, for me, as far as exercising more, uh, I started getting on the bike. And, uh, you know, I, I walk around a little bit. But uh, I even uh, – I, I biked about 15, 20 miles a couple of days ago, and I'm really getting into it. So, uh, you know, I, I like uh, – you know, I like getting on it. And, and uh, other than that, I just try to get in the pool and move around. You know, I get a little stiff, but it's a little. I, I like going to the gym because I can get on the stationary machines. But uh, you know, as far as getting on the bike, it's a little easier for me to do that. Yeah, there's no doubt. Well, you know, it, it's a challenge for everybody. Um, you know, I've had other other athletes uh, that've been on the phone, guys that are still playing, and uh, you know, it it can just be a challenge for them. You know, if you think about your situation, if you were still competing, let's say you were still in the league and. Uh, you know, here, here you would be in April, uh, typically be getting ready for, you know, the draft. And then right after that, you'd have a little mini camp and then, uh, then you're going to summer workouts. But right now, all of that's kind of up in the air. And so, um, you know, what, what would your mindset be if you were still playing just uh, how, how you would be preparing for, for the upcoming season? Well, unless, unless, they're, unless they're putting in a new system or, or, or I'm young in the league, then I would have to learn the system. Other than that, really, when I first came in the league, we didn't have it as organized as it is now. I would yeah. really start doing most of my training and go to Colorado and out to, tra- to train uh, more toward June, May and June, where I would be with the team just lifting weights and running. So if the problem is right now you can't lift weights, and I saw the NFL said they're going to give guys uh, money to buy weights. So you can't lift weights. So I would just be outside running some sprints or – hundreds or jogging some and just trying to stay fit. And uh, other than that, I, you just have to wait till they open the weight room back up where you can lift. So, uh, but normally uh, when I was younger in my career, they didn't start, they didn't start doing all the OTAs and those bonuses. And they really got serious about that to the late nineties. Yeah. Yeah. It certainly things have, have changed a lot and, and not just in the NFL, even in college. I mean, this uh, becomes more of a year round, a uh, year round sport. Um, you know, I was thinking about uh, some of the times that we've had together, and, and, and again, I, uh, there's certain people you get to interact with in my position in my life, and, and uh, you, you've been one of my all-time favorites. So just being, you just got a great personality and responsible. You should respond to us on text, and and uh, we just, it's just been great to be able to get to know you. One of my favorite memories is uh, when you got inducted in the College Football Hall of Fame up in New York in December, probably about five years ago, maybe. Uh, and we went up there and, and celebrated that time, and I got to meet your father, and uh, just to t- think about him and and uh, how proud he was of you. And, and actually, on oh, 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 that bookshelf behind my my uh, shoulder there, I've got a book that he gave me. He played at Michigan State, which I did not know, uh, and it was just a different time and era. And he's he's mentioned in this book that talks about Michigan State. But just talk about your 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 parents and just uh, maybe what they meant to you and and. Uh, you know, you're growing up and everything and, and, uh, and just kind of uh, that. Because I, I know your father passed probably was it about a, two years ago now. Uh, it was, uh, you know, what's, what's ironic? Uh, 
that was in 14 when I went in the uh, College Football Hall of Fame yeah. in December. Uh, it, when my father passed, I was at the tech opener in 17, okay. and Scott Collins had come to the game. Remember Scott? Yeah, yeah, that's game. right. Yeah, we before are. He, before he passed, the hurricane hit. Remember the hurricane I hit? I sure do. And I went over to Shreveport. Uh, the guy at El Dorado I know took care of me. Uh, I forget the guy that runs it. And uh, I was in Shreveport, and my dad passed on that Tuesday. That's right. So he died right after I came to that game, to that uh, News in Entertainment Open that year. In 17, yes. September 12th, 17. And that was, so our remember, new, that was our new, the press box. We just opened the press box. We just and, opened the press yeah. box and everything. But, yeah. but I tell you what, Tommy, he was so, he was so thankful uh, that uh, he was so glad I got to go to La Tech. And he was so close to come to all the games. And, you know, when, when, I, when I went to Louisiana Tech and committed, uh, two of the guys from my high school had backed out and went to Arkansas State. So I was kind of getting a little waffling a little bit in my mind. And when my mother, uh, we went and sat in Coach Peace's office. You can ask Coach Peace about this. Uh, my mom said, Willie, you made a commitment to this university and you're going to go. And she, when, when I committed and, and I was and I signed that letter, I mean, she just cried like a baby in there with, with Coach Peace in the office. And I know he remembers it. But she said, you made, a, you made your commitment yeah. to lose at Tech. And I ended up coming down there and playing. So, you know, they had a lot of integrity. They brought us up the right way. And being from Arkansas, it was just a great era for sports, high school, colleges in that area, Tech, Monroe, all those schools. It was very competitive, uh, even at the smaller schools than, than it was, it, just like Arkansas was in the Southwestern Conference and LSU and all those schools, but the competition was very good back then. But there's no doubt. Uh, and I, I just, uh, anyway, it was just such, it was such a great, a great moment to be with there, be with your, your dad there and, and to celebrate uh, your career in college and, and your induction into College Football Hall of Fame. You know, one of the things, and I think about your time at Louisiana Tech, um, and we can talk about some of your favorite, maybe some of your favorite memories. You've got one of the more iconic pictures that, of Louisiana Tech's history. When people sometimes think of Louisiana Tech football, there's an iconic image of you uh, of playing in Legion Field uh, against uh, Alabama, and you, you kind of stiff on yeah. it. Uh, they, they're all American. Uh, but let's talk about that time period, late 80s, early 90s, when you were on campus. Won't, won't you talk a little bit about what was going on, not just on the football team, but some of the people you had the privilege of being able to go to school with and class with every day in the various sports? Wow. It was um, – when, when I got to Louisiana Tech, which, you know, I'm from Arkansas, so I followed the Razorbacks. I didn't really know a lot about Louisiana Tech history. Uh, and I walk on campus and um, – well, the first I walked in that facility when we when I went on my recruiting trip, but uh, I was there. Randy White was there with the basketball team, the most dominant sport in at Louisiana Tech. They ran that campus. What a lady, Texas. <laughs> Teresa Witherspoon was there, a friend of mine. Venus Lacy, uh, Vicky Johnson. Uh, so the year before I got there, they had won their last national. I think that's the last one they won, right, Tommy? In eight, eighty-eight. Eight, yep. Eighty-eight. And I got there in the fall of 88, so they had just won their last national championship. And Coach Barmore and Kim, or Kim Mulkey, I think, was assistant coach. But, uh, I mean, they were – it was special. The basketball team was real good. So the football team, when I got there, was just going independent the That's next right. year, jumping up. So we were starting off from scratch. And then we had Coach Pete, who had been on the staff, who loved the university. And uh, we, were, we were trying to make a name for ourselves and, and play some – top-notch college football, but the football program had been down a little bit before he had, before Coach Peace had taken yeah. over. Yeah, I mean, just a remarkable kind of a, you know, I mean, a really kind of a golden period of time for, for across-the-board success. We talk about the baseball program during that yes. period of time going to a regional and some of the guys uh, that you said, you, you know, you kind of remember. David Segui, David Segui David Segui. in Kansas City. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, Whitey Richardson played it with the Red, Reds for a little bit. And then uh, Charlie Montoya was on that team. And Charlie is now the manager of the Blue Jays. Uh, mm -hmm. And so you got guys that were all over that campus that were just having success at that time. And, and, and before I got there, you also go in the 80s. You still had Tank Landry, who was a great player, yes. who went to play in Canada. 
you have Walter Johnson, who coached uh, coach, uh, Jerry, Jerry Baldwin, who coached him in yeah. Natchez, recruited me because he had, he had came up there with Walter Johnson and got okay. there. And you also had P.J. Brown, who was a freshman, and Barry Day, Anthony Day, and all those guys on the, on the lady te- on the basketball team. And at that time, Malone was kind of had been in the league a few years, but Malone used to come back in town. Yeah. Malone had a maroon uh, 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 Mercedes Benz <laughs> with velvet interior. I remember <laughs> this. And he, he used to come to the Intermural Center, and I remember he came up there, and he had some shoes. He had an L.A. Gear shoe contract, and he had a pair of shoes in there that were too big for me, couldn't wear so I remember him giving me a pair of shoes when I was a freshman. At Man, time. good deal, good deal. Well, so, hey, we talk about basketball. I want to show you this picture. Th- this is one of my favorite pictures of you of all time. So yeah. that that is you and Dick Vitale. Am I right? Yes. In high school, the King Cotton Tournament, yeah, big basketball tournament. So you so you were a really good basketball player as well, weren't you? I, I, was, I was a decent basketball player. I had, You know, I, was, I started playing basketball later. In fact, to, to be honest with you, before I committed to La Tech, I asked Coach Peace. I wanted to make sure I could play basketball as well. And he said that I could play sport, both sports. But when I got there, I realized how committed you had to be to one, yeah. one sport and how yeah. hard that would be. So uh, especially playing, moving off as a tackle, that wasn't going to work, especially as I got older. But, no, he, he you know, it really – you know, I, I, don't, I tell a lot of people this, but uh, – I almost, when Scotty Pippen came out of UCI, I went and had yeah. a real good camp at uh, Conway with Coach Dyer, and they had a real good program, and that show be coming on this uh, this Sunday, the start of it. And um, I almost went to uh, UCA. And yeah. to be, and I, I don't think, my dad, I think, told Coach Ball, because I did pretty good in the King Cotton, and I had a double-double against L.A. Fairfax in the King Cotton in the second game. And I don't think, Coach Ball told me all my scholarship offers in basketball, so that if I, if I had known a big if I had a bigger offer, I got a letter from UConn, I might have been playing basketball. But I'm only I'm about six five, so it's, it worked out well. My dad knew I should have been playing football. <laughs> I'm looking at this list right here that I read off: Louisiana Tech Sports Hall of Fame, Louisiana Hall of Fame, College Football Hall. Of Fame. I think Pro Football Hall of Fame. I think you made the right choice, Willie. But yeah, I, well, I think what that that shows though is, you know, really the athleticism that you had. I mean. Uh, you know, to be able to uh, – the feet that you had to have and the quickness and the footwork that you had to have to be not only a, a good offensive lineman but to be a pro Hall of Famer type lineman, you had to have incredible hands and feet uh, to go with that size, and uh, you had the fundamentals of that. Well, what happened was when I was in high school at that time in Arkansas, we couldn't use our hands. You had to block like this with your arms. So when I got to – college with coach Piro who who had, who had been an outstanding lineman in the league and the tough coach Piro was the tough guy now he you know he was, he was yeah. a good athlete but he's a tough guy and we had some tough guys on that line I was able to use my hands and we had those drills and coach Piro was, was a stick on the fundamental drill so when I got there in in that system and being able to flip around you know from the time I got there that second or, that second or third year it just kind of came naturally. Now I had to work at it and get in the weight room and get bigger and stronger. But it, it like you said, it, it pretty much came naturally to me. And, uh, and you know, and, and we had a great strength coach. Joe Taylor was a strength coach, and he, and, you know, we, he would be on us. And um, man, it, it was. A, I, I tell the guys, we still have group chats with a lot of guys I played with and, and, and played sports with in, in college days and in mm-hmm. pro. But I tell them uh, what you miss. You know, I don't miss the pros as much. I miss the journey of getting to the pros. Because yeah. when I got there, we had Eddie Brown. We had guys, Derek Douglas, we got a tryout. Eddie Brown, Antonio Brown's daddy, was the receiver on the team, got a tryout. Oh, wow. Bobby Slaughter got a tryout. So guys just getting a chance to even go into camp, and they come back on campus, and they would be so – we would be so proud of these guys just getting a tryout or making a practice squad. That was huge to see that yeah. happen. So – that's, you know, that's kind of, uh, we were all standing in the hut and, and we just, uh, we we saw guys getting the shots to play in the pros and we just, w- we wanted to build on that momentum and that's what we did. Yeah, the the, the brotherhood or the, the camaraderie that you have in a collegiate locker room, it, it, you know, it's just not the same. It's not going to be there at the professional level because one, 
in college, everyone's within four to five years of each other at the professional level. You're going to have some 21 year olds and you're going to have some 38 mm -hmm. to 38 year olds with families and you know, the, the, the life stage of everybody is different. And uh, so, you, you know, it's still it's still a locker room, but it's different. Um, you know, is what is what uh, you know we hear. And, 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 and we and we all live together. Back then, it wasn't. Yes. We all were in, in the the basketball team was on the first floor. The track team, the football team was on the second floor. Third floor, I don't think was sports, but we all lived in the hut for the yes. most part. Unless you were older, then you moved into some other type of housing. Yeah. No, I mean, there's no doubt. You you you're forged in those relationships, and uh, you're kind of all going through the same situations at the same time. Um, you know, you spent. You know, how many years were you with the Saints? Uh, nine was, years. Nine years. Was that the the, mo the most at one team, or was it almost fifty fifty? No, no, no. It was. It was when I left. If you know, in fact, Pokey Gajon was the scout for the for the Saints. That was good friends with Coach Piro. They played together. Yeah. Pokey came, and they asked about me. Probably my red shirt freshman year. Who is this kid? And they said, Well, he's nothing but a freshman, and. Um, that second year, we uh, we went to the Independence Bowl. We went eight and three, and beat Colorado State. We beat uh, Southern Miss, and we uh, tied Maryland in the Independence Bowl. And after that, my redshirt sophomore year, I knew if I, they told me if you do what you need to do, well, then you stay, you know, take care of your classwork and and keep getting better. You're gonna have a chance to play on Sunday. They didn't tell me how I would go, but yeah. I knew I knew after my redshirt sophomore year that uh. I was going to have a chance to play. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, you spent a lot of time in New Orleans, and obviously New Orleans has been kind of in the news a lot here recently with this uh, pandemic. And, uh, you know, just talk a little bit about that. Do you still have connections there? And, you know, you stay in touch with people there and just you know, uh, your heart for the city of New Orleans. Uh, some good friends of mine. In fact, Kevin Crawford, you know Crawdaddy? Yes, uh, yeah. He works for the Postal Service there. A good friend of his that – that I met through him and Tiffany, his wife went to uh, look who's at a tech also, who's, who's both good friends of mine, uh, lost somebody uh, a few weeks ago. Okay. That I, they think he got sick during Mardi Gras and um, uh, uh, he was diabetic. And you know, if you have any underlying health issues, it's hard, but you know, the problem is Tommy, they didn't, the hospitals then wouldn't do anything until you were out of shortness of breath. So. Yes. By the time you're going in the hospital, you you have fluid in your lungs, basically. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you know, it's been a tough deal. Uh, some other people that I know that have lost some loved ones uh, down there in other places. So, uh, you know, we just just stay pray pray about everything and stay praying up for everybody. But I think it's a good time time to reflect on everything, and hopefully, this brings people closer together. Because when something like this happens, it, it doesn't matter. Your your race or, or no. your, how much money you have or anything and nobody it's, doesn't just doesn't care. You know? No, it's neutralized people. That that that's a great word, Willie. Just to to think about that and and uh, that we're all in this together. To your point, doesn't matter whether you play sports, don't play sports, black, white, uh, got money, don't have money, yeah. inner inner city or rural areas. No yeah. one's immune to it, and we've all got to do our part to be a part of the solution and not to help you know, make it worse. Um, but, uh, well, you got your shirt on. Uh, we'll end yeah. with this, uh, that, you know, you, you were voted, uh, I guess that was in 2018, I think maybe, um, you were voted one of the top 50 players to ever play in Joe IA stadium during the 50 year period of Joe IA. So Joe IA stadium had a 50 year anniversary a couple of years ago and you got voted on that came into town and kind of had a big deal. And, um, just, you know, I guess just end with a reflection of knowing that, you know, your time at Louisiana Tech, you're one of only three people uh, in the history of the program that is in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, uh, Terry Bradshaw, uh, uh, Fred Dean, and yourself, and just the legacy that you have left. And we are so proud of you, really, in the way that you've gone on and represented us and the ambassador that you are for Louisiana Tech. And, um just, just the person that you become and, and uh, the player that you, you were. And um, really, truly, when you think about who you, the mark you left on Louisiana Tech, it, it really is remarkable. And, uh, you know, who would have thought the guy from Pine Bluff, Arkansas, would come in 
and be one of only three people in the history of the university to ever be inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But uh, but you did it, and you did it with class, and we're so proud of you. Well, th- and, and it's it's funny, you know, when I got there, I was on the recruiting trip with uh, Doug Evans, who who got <laughs> drafted, had a long career, and they and they saw me. They said, "Who's this tall, skinny, skinny kid?" They thought I was playing basketball, so. You know, to go from there, and then when you back then, when you walked through the field house, it, it was just the front part, and yeah. they had they had a row of all the all Americans up and down the wall. And in that year I came in, I got to be friends with a guy named Glennell Sanders, mm-hmm. and Shank. We called him Shank. Shank was a great linebacker. You know, he, he led he led he was lead tackler for three years in a row, and Shank tried out for the pros too, but you know, just being around those guys and seeing those guys work and, you know, that first year, the practice is different and everything's different. When you get to the college level, it's a big adjustment. It's a big adjustment for the pros, but when you go to high school or college, it's a big adjustment. And um, it was just, you know, seeing those guys and seeing those All-Americans and seeing all that was just motivation. And uh, like I said, you know, I, I hope I hope that, that we – our, our era was able to motivate some guys and it, you know, to, to want to do well because they went from Bradshaw to uh, Roger, the, the other All-American, you know, to get first round pick. And yeah. then there was a 20-some year gap. And then I was the first one. And I went yeah. to be in the first round pick. So, and then we had four, three other guys drafted in that yes. class. You know, and from, from Tech, four guys in one class. And Baron Rollins, five guys made the pros in our class. So, mm. It was a it was a real special time, and we we put a lot of work in on that football field, and uh, and uh, it paid off because we earned a lot of respect. We went to some of the big boys' house, and we weren't Coach Pete P wrote, and Pete sure weren't intimidated, and Isming, and so we we weren't gonna be intimidated. So when we stepped out on that field, they knew they knew they knew they were they were playing a a quality opponent by the end of those games, so even SEC school. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Well, Willie, we, we appreciate your time uh, today and just kind of give us an update and talking tech with us. It, it's been fun. Uh, you, you, I consider you a friend and I appreciate everything that you've done. And just like you said, we're so proud of you and the ambassador that you are. Stay safe and uh, we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, everybody. That's our latest edition of Tech Talk uh, with Willie Rowe. Go dogs.